Of all the possible tragedies of childhood, losing a sister or brother to early death is almost too awful to contemplate. Yet it is startlingly common. In the United States, 5 to 8% of children with siblings experience such a loss. The immediate effects of a sibling's death and the grief that follows are obvious to all. But the consequences are more than emotional and can last for decades. They're even associated with an increased risk of death in those who remain. That's the topic of this week's Healthcare Triage. A recent study in JAMA Pediatrics followed all children in Denmark and Sweden from 1973 through 2013. More than 55,000 of these children experienced the death of a sibling before they turned 18. In the 37 years of follow-up, these children were more than 70% more likely to die as well. Although the overall risk of death remained low throughout these years, it was highest in the first year after a sibling's death. During that period, children who lost a sibling have a mortality rate two and a half times that of other children. Why are children who lose siblings more likely to die, even decades later? One of the reasons is probably genetic. In the study, many of the children who died later, even those who died within a year of each other, died of the same disease as their sibling. Another factor could be the emotional impact and its effects on mental health, especially in the short term. Children who lose their parents are more likely to engage in alcohol or substance abuse not long after, often because of greater functional impairment and experience depression or post-traumatic stress disorder. That emotional damage can linger. A study of young adults who lost siblings to cancer found that most were still experiencing significant grief even nine years later. A case control study of children in Scandinavia found that children who experienced the death of a parent had twice the chance of committing suicide that increased risk lasted at least 25 years. The risk of suicide in children who lost a parent was four in 1,000 for boys and two in 1,000 for girls. Emotional damage can have a physical impact as well. In 2013, researchers published work in PLOS One that showed that both men and women who'd lost a sibling in adulthood had an elevated risk of death from stroke, potentially stress-related, in the 18 months after the sibling's death. For women, that increased risk got worse over time, still increasing 18 years later. Sibling death from external causes, mostly accidents and suicides, was also associated with an increased risk of death from heart attacks in women years later. Families who lose a child are more likely to show problems that already existed, like evidence of social deprivation and poor health. Healthcare professionals may want to consider that the death of a child can exacerbate problems and signify long-term social, behavioral, and environmental risks for the survivors. These warning signs exist in other familial relationships. Researchers have shown that losing a child increases the mortality rate in mothers more than a decade later, both from natural and unnatural causes. It increases the mortality rate in fathers too, but only from unnatural causes. Losing a parent does the same. Death may be harder for children. As a parent, I can imagine nothing worse than the loss of a child. But as I watch my children grow up together, I'm struck by the fact that their bond is, at times, stronger than their bonds to my wife and me. They're together at school. They're together at camp. They're together when they play. They have secrets and shared experiences as they grow and develop together. They also have known almost no life without each other. They're also far less capable of handling a loss than I or my wife would be. A study in the late 1990s examined how children responded to the loss of a parent versus a sibling. Girls, in general, were more affected by the loss of a sibling, especially a sister. Preteens showed higher levels of depression and anxiety, and adolescents had more attention problems and anger. Given all of these data, it may be time for us to pay more attention to the long-term effects of a child's death. We can take hope from research showing that most children do thrive and overcome adversity, even after such a loss. Too many do not, though. We ought to monitor those who lost siblings as children for possible health consequences for many years to come. Sometimes talking about drugs and sex education and health insurance aren't advertising friendly. And making those important videos could actually hurt our bottom line. Healthcare triage is made possible in part, therefore, by our supporters at Patreon. The support we receive from our patrons at Patreon allows us to keep making those kinds of videos without worrying about ad revenue. 
So thanks to all of them, and particularly thanks to our Surgeon Admiral Sam and research associates Joe Sevitz and Joshua Crow. If you'd like to support the show, we'd really appreciate it. You can go to patreon.com slash healthcare triage. While we're asking you to do stuff, please consider subscribing to the show, consider buying some healthcare triage merch as the holidays come up at hctmerch.com. And I've got a book coming out November 7th, The Bad Food Bible, available anywhere you'd buy books, and I'd really appreciate your picking up a copy.